Let's prep for the exam. Here we're going to have four problems on four different topics that we're expecting to see on the exam. Recursion, lists and posins, and how to process built-in structures like that. Abstraction, and working with built-in abstractions with Lambda and Local. We'll solve each of these problems, and I'll talk through it. The first problem is, given a data definition, here river that has a source or a fork, find the max elevation, that is the source number that is the highest. River is a recursive data structure. It has a self-reference. It actually has two self-references in the two parts of fork. Now we'll write max elevation. It takes a river and produces a number. First we'll write some examples. There we have two examples. Now let's write our template. We either have a source or a fork. If we have a source, then we have the elevation. Otherwise, we have the left and right. In each of these cases, we need a self-reference. Here's our template. Now the only thing we have to do is combine the results of max elevation on the left and the right. We want the larger number, so we'll use the built-in function max. And now we're done with max elevation. Oops, I forgot to add r as the input to source elevation. Now let's move on to our next problem. Here we have a data definition for a list of posins and for posin. We've seen these plenty of times before. We're going to write sum x. It's going to add up all of the x coordinates in a list of posins. Let's start with some examples. The empty list has no x coordinates, so the sum is 0. Here, the x-coordinates are 10 and 5, so the sum will be 15. Now let's write our template. It's going to be the standard list template combined with information about posins. I've made sure to extract posin x and posin y from the first of LOP, and I've made sure to have my self-reference recursive call for the rest of LOP. We don't actually care about the y-coordinate, so we're just going to get rid of that. Sum x produces a number, as does posin x, and we want to sum them up, so we'll just combine those with plus. And now we have to take care of the empty case. We have an example that tells us that that should produce zero. And now we're done. Now let's look at an abstraction problem. Here's the definition of min elevation. 
min elevation looks a lot like max elevation. So let's turn this into an abstraction, which we'll call select elevation. We'll start by copying min elevation. We'll change the name to select elevation. And the only difference was min versus max, so we'll turn that into an input, which I'll call select. That's our new input, which we'll add to select elevation. Now we'll need to write a new signature and also redefine min elevation and max elevation. Our new signature will look like this. It takes a river as the first input, just like we had before, and now it takes a function with two inputs both of which are numbers, and we produce a number, and select elevation as a whole produces a number. What's the purpose of this function? It's to choose an elevation according to the select function. Now let's redefine min elevation. The one thing that was different was min, so we'll change this to use select elevation with r as an input and min. And now we're done redefining min elevation. Redefining max elevation works exactly the same. Now let's move on to our last problem about lambda and local. Here's the sh specification for the shrink posins function which takes a list of posins and a number and produces another list of posins, having divided all of the x-coordinates by n. Let's see some examples. If we have the empty list and we shrink it by 1, then we're going to get the empty list back. If we have a list of posins, and we have 10 and 5 and we shrink it by a factor of 2, we're going to get a new list of posins where we have 5 and 5. Now let's write shrink posins using the map function, since we're performing the same operation on every element of the list. We're going to use map, and then we're going to have some function, and we're going to apply it to the list of posins. Now, that function is going to need to use n, so we could define it either with lambda or with local. I'll start with by defining it with lambda. Our function takes a posin because we're applying a map to a list of posins, so we'll want to use posin x of p and pos and y of p. We're also producing a posin from these two coordinates again, so I'll use make posin. But we're going to make the x coordinates smaller, so I'll divide that by n. And now we're done. Let's run our program and see that everything worked. Oops, we have one mistake. We didn't remember to pass the select function as an input to select elevation. Now we run our program, and all our tests pass. If you can solve all of these kinds of problems, then 
you're ready for the midterm exam.